Do you ever get so excited about a project that you completely forget time and place until it is done, even if it is completely ridiculous? Because same. Merry October, internet friend. A month of madness, mayhem and pumpkins. Today is going to be a good day. We start by bribing a resident void in an attempt to make it sit still for long enough that we can take an approximate measure of top of head roundness. Said void is not overly enthused about having anything placed on top of its head except for pats, a promising premonition of things to come. Next up, we discard a big scrap of fabric that could be used for something more sensible in favor of a smaller piece of scrap fabric. On top of which, we place some sort of round object to help us achieve a circle as big as the scrap will allow us. Supervision, while helpful, is not strictly necessary. Cut out shape. Next, we cut out some cone shapes, with a base width roughly relevant to the top of head roundness from earlier. If you have some festive scraps, now is a good place to cut out some of that for the lining. Me? I just have my wool. For the second lining circle, I did not have a big enough small scrap. Still unwilling to sacrifice my big scrap, I stitched two together instead. For that, we first straighten the edges, Backstitch them safely together and return from a quick press to be cut out. We also need a smaller hole within the bigger circle, though this needs to be slightly smaller than the aforementioned top of head measurement, you know, for seam allowance purposes. Then we stitch the outer rim of our two fabric donuts together. Clip into the curved seam allowance, be careful not to cut the seam, and turn the whole thing right side out. Now for the top cones, stitched up nicely. We then give all our new friends a good press, before pinning the outermost cone to the rim layer. Note to self, this would have been easier if we just stitched the top fabric and the lining fabric separately, but we made do. And we have what is starting to look like a wonky little witch's hat. Last is the cone lining, wrong side out, all pinned in place and neatly stitched. You'd think we were pretty much done by now, but no. Even small voids have big ears that must be accommodated. So next up, we are going to destroy our cute new hat by cutting a big hole on either side. Scraps of scraps become stuffing material, of course. And now for some decor. I do not want to fold these ear ventilators in on themselves and try to make that look neat, so instead we're going to attach some velvet ribbon from my stash to the front and back, as well as to use that ribbon to bind off the edges. Who knows, maybe the nice velvet floofs will help the Void's natural air conditioning system stay warm. And because we have a pretty strong inkling that Madame Void will not enjoy this particular brand of tomfoolery, we are giving it a little satin ribbon to give it some vague hope of staying in place for even the shortest amount of time. And it's done! Mm. 
No respectable witch would be seen without a broomstick though, so let's try making one out of some straw and a stick I found outside. If you can't tell, I have no idea what I'm doing. I am literally just bundling up some straw at the bottom of a stick. I do apologize to any broom crafters who might be watching this. All right, let's go terrorize a void. It's going to have to be a zero out of 10 from Soot, but the broomstick on the other hand, So it's a big nope from Soot, although she was terribly cute. But what about Enya, our anxious old lady Cloud Void? As with most things, Enya is confused. Why are we doing this, human? Why? It is a resigned out of 10 from Enya, but my goodness, the madam is adorable. So that's that, day successfully wasted, cats successfully traumatized. I hope this video, maybe, put a smile on your face. And if not, I hope something else you do today will. Until next time! <laughs>